Welcome everyone to our latest episode of Jim and Java. Well, welcome back. I'm Jim Dempsey, 36 year veteran of development and fundraising. And I'm here every week to answer your questions regarding fundraising and development. I'm excited to always be here every week to answer your questions. If you didn't get a chance to submit your questions this week, be sure to go out to at DevFStrats on Twitter and use the hashtag Jim and Java to ask your questions. Of course, you can always put questions in the comment section below, so make sure you do that. But uh, I'm excited to move to our first set of questions. Today, our first question that we have is from Dan in Detroit. And Dan asks, what's involved in the win, keep, and lift strategy that you mention all the time? Well, thanks, Dan, for mentioning that. I appreciate that. The win, keep, and lift strategy is something that I have really adhered to. Uh, I learned win, keep, and lift very early on in my development efforts. And the, uh, the idea is that you want to win people to your cause, keep them through cultivation, and constantly lift those people to a higher level of giving and a higher level of involvement. The winning phase can include anything from a direct mail letter. You could go into a business meeting, a club, a church, a Sunday school class. You could go in and talk about your organization and what you do. It could be the organization as a whole or if you raise your own personal support. That could be all part of the winning phase. It's bringing someone along to your cause so that they are interested and then eventually will make the decision to give a gift to your organization. Then there's the middle, there's the keep. And keeping is just as it sounds. You want to keep people being part of your organization. You want to keep them giving to your organization. You want to keep them involved in your organization. We find that people who are involved in organizations actually give more as a whole. And so those people who volunteer, they participate, they um, invite friends to dinners or to participate in a walkathon or a jogathon, any type of, of fundraising event that you do, all those kinds of things are part of the keeping strategy. So getting them to events and activities that you do, all part of the process. Now, of course, with any good effort, you want to lift people to a higher level involvement and, of course, a higher level in their giving participation. To have someone stay at 10 or 15 or $20 a month for 20, 30, 40 years isn't good stewardship. It's not wise. They have increased their responsibilities in their job, probably making quite a bit more than they did 20 or 30 years ago, and they really have the potential and the capability to, to give more. So you need to get them involved more. So if you think about the process as being a lot like gardening, you plant the seed, that's the win, and take care of it, nurture it, water it, give it um, fertilizer, and that's the keeping side of things. And then, of course, the lifting is when you actually pick the fruit or you um, Make sure that in your garden that you've got uh, whatever your plant that you've grown, uh, you take advantage of that harvest that uh, has, has been created. So that's the win, keep, and lift strategy. Uh, it's been something that I have followed for 36 years, and I believe that it's, it's simple but effective. The next question that we've got is from Wendy in Indianapolis, and Wendy asks, how do I handle a situation where a donor wants to decrease their giving? Well, Wendy, um, you know, I can imagine that's never an easy process. I've had someone uh, myself, I've had individuals who have uh, decided that they were going to give less. And uh, it, it, it's the, the initial shock of that is never easy. Uh, knowing that someone wants to give less. I kind of like to look at it as it's better that they give less than to stop giving at all. Uh, and But the biggest thing that you need to do, you want to do your homework. You want to do a little research. You want to call them and say, Joe, Mary, thank you so much. I want you to know that we've just appreciated so much, 30, 40 years of you partnering with us, and that means a great deal to us. Um, tell me a little bit about your situation, your circumstances, because if it's been something related to COVID or job or retirement, they may actually feel even a little embarrassed, a little shy that they have have to do that. 
But there could be a reality that needs to be addressed and that there may be something that you've done or something your organization has done to cause people to, to decrease in their giving. And that's important to know that as well, too. And, uh, of course, if somebody is frustrated, disappointed, upset with us, it really helps to listen. I've found over the years that sometimes people just want to be able to express their frustration. And uh, I can't tell you how often that I've had people express it in a letter or an email, and when I call them back up, They've already expressed their frustration, and uh, they've, they've sort of almost regretted the fact that uh, they got to that position. But I would say that it's so important that you make sure that you understand where they're coming from. Uh, sympathize with them, especially if they are, are going through some, some tough times. Make sure that you let them know you'll be thinking about them, you're praying for them. Let them know if, if there's anything you could do for them in this time. Because this, you know, this could be a very troubling time for them. And just let them know that you're with them. I tell you, it's amazing how often I have seen partners who we've weathered the storms with them. And they've said, you were the only one, only organization that hung in there with me during these tough times. And they make up the difference in that. And it's really exciting. So that's how I would handle that, Wendy. It's not an easy situation, but uh, that would be the way that I would respond to that. So anyway, for that's it for this episode of Jim and Java. I'm excited to be able to be with you every week. Once again, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, Development Effectiveness Strategies, and make sure that you click the bell. A lot of times people don't realize that you have to click the bell to be notified when future videos come out. And make sure that, as I said early on, if you've got questions, go to at dev F strats uh, in Twitter and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And I appreciate each and every one of you. If you are a podcast person, we've got a great podcast out there that I do with my co-host Erica Jurena, who's a 22-year veteran of nonprofit organizations. We answer questions about nonprofit organizations. And so if you're interested, if you're a podcaster, go out to where you get your podcasts and uh, go with that. Well, everyone, this wraps up our last episode of Jim and Java, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. And once again, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.